guys, I cannot tell you how excited I am to show you, for, to finally show you my new pedal board build. As I'm sure some of you know, if you've gone through the similar sort of process, you know that this can take months, if not years in the making, you know, different designs, different layouts, different pedals. And that's kind of exactly what I've been going through recently, the past six months or so. It's been a journey. Um, you know, there's like I said, there's been lots of different design layouts and different ideas going on, but I am so, so happy where this has ended up. This is by far the biggest and best pedal board I've ever used. But not only is it, you know, the biggest board, not, not everyone wants a big board, but this is actually also the most efficient board I've built too. The most, the signal path going through this board is really, really clean if you ask me, um, considering how many pedals are on here. So I'm really excited to get into it. We are gonna do that. We're gonna go through some tones, the signal path, like I said, a few of my favorite stacking combinations as well. But first of all, a few housekeeping rules. This build would not have been possible without Rich from Alder and Ash Pedal Boards, who made the pedal board obviously, and also Phil from Pedal Patch UK, who provided, or um, basically sorted me out with all the, or 90% of the patch cables on here. Both of those guys did give me discounts on their stuff if I did videos on them, uh, so bear that in mind. Similar sort, of, similar sort of story with the pedals on here as well. Some of them I've had for free to do demos on, some of them I've had discounts on, and some of them I've paid full price for. So bear that in mind going forward, something I've really got to start making sure I'm telling you guys. Uh, moving forward. So hopefully you can see the board on the B cam, hopefully you can see everything going on. This is just the top shelf in a way, I've, I've got a few pedals underneath as well. Um, and yeah, this is kind of the top shelf. As you can see, there's a few new things on here that um, I've not used before. Most of all, or kind of the heart of the board in a way, is this Gig Rig Quartermaster. This is the six foot switch, switch six loop version. That's basically controlling my whole drive section. Um, so all my drives and fuzzers are going through this, except for one which is here. Um, and yeah, that's basically giving me control over all the drives, make, helping the signal really keep really clear. This board would not have been possible again without the gig rig. It's able, it enabled me to put pedals underneath the board to save space on top. Another thing on this board which is completely new to me, and it was a bit of an experiment, I kind of didn't know how it was going to work out, but it's been an absolute dream, is the Electro Harmonics try parallel mixer up the top here. This is this is probably the MVP of the whole board. This is a game changer if you ask me. Um, so essentially it's a three parallel loop uh, pedal so you can kind of mix together three other pedals in parallel. So in the loop, we'll get into this a bit more later, but in the loop of this I have the DD200, the Walrus Slow and the Chase Bliss Mood and it basically allows me to create like the sort of sounds you've never heard before really. Um, it's really, really exciting. So first of all, um, a little bit about the board itself. This is a Taylor Pro from Alder and Ash. Um, I've, I, this is a 24 inch by 14 inch. So a little bit, it's the similar sort of size to a Pedal Train 2, uh, but a little bit deeper, two inches deeper. Um, and yeah, it's plenty big enough for me. Uh, this is, like I said, the easiest, easily the biggest board I've ever had. Um, I've gone for Walnut. Um, and a blue Tolex for the actual board, and I think it looks awesome. Um, and then for the case, it's actually stood on the case, so I get a bit of extra height for the camera angle, but again, it's awesome, awesome case. I've got a blue Tolex and black tweed case, and it looks sweet. I'll put up some pictures um, later, and it, if you ask me, it just looks so classy. Alder and Ash, in my opinion, are making some of the best pedal boards, if not the best pedal boards around at the moment. Definitely go check out Rich and his work. Great stuff. So let's have a quick look underneath before we get into some tones. Um, I've tried to keep the wiring as neat as possible, but again, I knew that this board was gonna get swapped and changed about a lot. So I wasn't too bothered about keeping it sort of, you know, clean like, um, like Uncle Mason might do, um, but it's pretty clean for me anyway. So under the board, we have a few pedals. We have uh, my Spruce FX Fuzz Face, Mythos Argo, uh, Cali76 from Origin FX, and finally my, Ry my Ryra clone there as well. So and they're all going through the Quartermaster as well. Um, so the whole board is also being powered by my um, True Tone One Spot Pro CS12, as well as a Chox 4, which is up here. I don't think that camera angle is picking it up, but I'll put some pictures. Um, yeah, and that's basically underneath the board. And I guess that leaves us 
on to some tones and the signal chain. First of all, we'll go into some signal chain. Uh, what I really like about the older Nash board as well is we also have uh, ins and outs on the side of the board, also a kind of a power in as well on the side of the board. I never really appreciated how uh, clean that would help make the board and allow me to place, you know, for example, the first pedal in the chain, um, not near somewhere I needed to get a jack to. So that was really, really useful. So we're going into the board on the side from my guitar, going straight into the quartermaster. Loop one of the quartermaster is the fuzz face underneath because it really likes to be the first thing in the signal chain. Then we have the Mythos Argo, then the Cali 76, then the Hudson Broadcast up here on the top so I can get to the extra foot switch if I want to. Then the Brownouts Protein again on the top so I can get a few get uh, access to the two different sounds. And then finally the Clone which is again underneath the board. After the Quartermaster we're going into the Hampstead Odyssey which I've fallen in love with again. This is actually a great pedal for stacking uh, fuzzes and other drives into it. It's got, it seems like it's got a lot of headroom going on um, and it sounds great. I'm using this as a bit more of a high gain option but this also might be a spot where I'm swapping and changing stuff out just in case I've got a, like an overdrive pedal demo coming up and I want to get to know a pedal. Then after that we're going into the tuner. Now admittedly the tuner is a little later on in the signal chain than I would prefer but it's honestly been fine there because I wanted to use the buffer that's in the uh, chromatic tuner from the TU3W. I wanted to use the buffer because I like the buffer in it. It had to be a little later on after the fuzzers. Um, so that's kind of where it's worked out best. After the tuner, we're going up into the jam pedals Ripley 4, which is where I'm getting all my modulation from. I'm not a big modulation guy, but when it comes to modulation, this pretty much covers all my needs. We have a uh, I think it's a two-stage phaser, so it's proper uh, pulsy, like a univibe sort of thing. Really nice, and then a chorus vibrato. Usually I'm leaving it on the vibrato side, but currently I have it on the chorus set quite subtly. After the Ripley 4, we're going into the Delay Llama. Again, another jam pedal. This is my favourite analog delay to date. Um, it does simple stuff, which is pretty much what I'm using it for, but it also does get crazy if you wanted it to. Then we're going into my probably my favourite pedal on the board, the Tri-Parallel Mixer. This thing is legit, like I said earlier. We've got the DD200, the Slow and the Mood in there. We'll get onto it a bit more in a second, but it allows me to run the mood and the slow 100% wet as well, which I really, really enjoy doing, and then mix in dry signal either with the DD200 or with the dry volume on the tri-parallel mixer. And it's basically allowed me to create my own reverbs using the slow and the mood, kind of combine what I like about either one, both of the pedals and sort of, yeah, create my own sounds. And that's been just the best fun ever. And then finally, out of the tri-parallel mixer, we're going into the flint which is, yeah, a faultless pedal in my opinion. It's become a serious part of my rig. And then out into the into the Victory V40. That's pretty much the whole signal chain. Uh, by the way, the Strymon favorite switch or whatever is connected to the Flint obviously as well. So yeah, this has been, this is a hefty board, um, but it kind of makes sense in my mind. You know, it really came together quite naturally over a few different trial layouts and trial signal paths. This sort of, presented itself to me in a weird sort of way um, and it's been just the best. Like I said earlier as well, the signal path is actually really clean as well. When everything's bypassed, uh, when everything's turned off, the signal chain is only going through the quartermaster, these two pedals and then the four pedals on the top. So it's really only going through, what, seven pedals and most of those are true bypass or have got really good buffers on them anyway. So the signal path is really, really clear. The quality of the cables from Pedal Patch as well has really helped keep that signal path clear. Those solderless cables from Pedal Patch are, were really, really great to make as well. I had no problems. Every single one worked first time, which was, you know, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting, you know, to have a couple duds, but I plugged it in for the first time and it instantly came to life. And I was like, this is just awesome. It really was just a really great experience for uh, making this board. All right, let's get some tones. That's what we're here for. I'm playing my Telecaster because, because I've not been able to put it down recently and it works really well with these um, pedal choices here. The amp is also completely dry. I'm not using any reverb from the uh, Victory or the Boss Wazza Tube Amp Expander. All the reverb I use now is from the Flint. It's got the best spring type I've heard, at least in a digital pedal, so it's kind of everything's coming from that. First I'll show you what it's like without the flint and then we'll switch on pretty much for the rest of the video. So uh, 
and then my spring reverb preset on. <laughs> And then first pedal in the chain, like I said, is the quartermaster, but the first in the loop is the fuzz face. Let's give it a go. It's a great Germanium fuzz face, the spruce, but it has a lot of the quirks that those vintage fuzzes come with as well. So, for example, you can't have your volume turned down because it gets really noisy. So if you turn the volume up a little bit on your guitar, it cleans up. So that's the first pedal. Next is the Argo. I never really use this pedal on its own, so I'll show you what it's like on its own first and then with the Odyssey. With the Odyssey. Filth, where those two pedals are stacked together, that's such an awesome synthy, glitchy solo tone, Octavia thing going on. One of my favorite things to do with these two pedals is actually use it in quite a non-traditional way and use it for riffs and stuff. Usually for octave stuff, you have it on your neck pickup, you're playing it with you know lead stuff. I love having it on the bridge, playing some fat chords. It just sounds filthy. <laughs> I mean, that's a sound for me, absolutely. I love that. Next, we're going to the Cali 76. Admittedly, I'm probably using it um, the least on the pedal board, but I do find having a compressor really useful. I'm using it as sort of a utility thing to get the funk sound or kind of boost other pedals, but this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably set a little hot actually. I've probably adjusted it by accident inside. Um, but that's the compressor. Sounds great with the broadcast, which is next. The broadcast is running on 18 volts, as is the Kali 76. Um, and they sound great together. So uh, this is the Kali 76 and the broadcast. <laughs> They work really well together in my opinion, kind of gives this a, f a fat, clean edge of breakup sound that is almost reminiscent of going straight into a desk. It's got that sort of thing going on and I love it. Next, the broadcast by itself. This is another sort of MVP of the whole board in a way. It's a real, makes me feel good to have this on a board again. It's been a while since I've been able to fit it on and I've not basically not turned it off. It's been awesome. <laughs> So as you can hear, it's just warming things up, giving you a bit of that sort of uh, preamp breakup that I'm loving. I pretty much only use it on the kind of low gain side, but I have this barefoot button on here in case I want to go to the filthy fuzz side and it still sounds good. <laughs> So yeah, don't use that sound too often, but it's there when I need it, and I love it. Next we're going into the Protein. I've spoken a lot about how much I love the Protein. It's awesome to have it on this board as well. Um, these are the two sides. We've got the blue side.
nothing wrong with that pedal at all. I love it. What I love about the signal path as well, um, kind of using the Pro Team in the Quartermaster and having generally a much cleaner signal path, feels like it's brought quite a lot of the attack back, especially to the blue side. I feel like it really hits the note immediately. Um, it's quite unforgiving for because of that, but it just sounds great, especially with the Telecaster, in my opinion. It really hits you hard. It's awesome. Next, and the last pedal in the looper, we have the clone. Um, then I'm using, really using this as my solo boost. Um, don't often use it on its own, but it still sounds good. <laughs> Again, I'm not sure it's really a Jackson pedal board unless it's got a Klan type pedal on there. I find them so useful in my bedroom, kind of when I'm sort of just messing around. I probably don't use them too much, but when I'm starting to mess around with sounds in mixers and in bands and stuff, which admittedly hasn't been for a while, Klons are just essential for my sound in a way. Um, and then after the looper, we go into the Odyssey. Again, this is just a great do-it-all overdrive. I've got it set kind of high again than some of the other sounds on here but it stacks really well as well you've already heard it with the Argo I'm gonna play it on its own and then I'm gonna boost it with the Klon before it and it just it's so thick and great so this is on its own <laughs> It's been a while since I've had a board that gives me the option to go that high gain and it's been a lot of fun. I, I've not messed around with gain like that for a long time and it's been great. Next up we have the tuner which works out well because I was going out of tune. Um, the TU3W, I've been using it for a long time. Um, I know a TU3 or a TU2 would be just as good but I do think the buffer in this sounds great. Um, so the buffer's on and it's helping drive the signal path and keep it clear. Next up we have the Ripley Fall. Uh, pretty simple. I kind of use it mostly for vibrato, but it's certain on a chorus at the moment. Let's put it to vibrato. I'll show you how I would usually have it set. Maybe with a bit of love from the broadcast. <laughs> really subtle vibrato like that that was actually probably set a bit strong for me and I end up leaving it on for like for, like pretty much leaving it on completely it almost disappears into the background especially when you combine it with a delay and a reverb or whatever and it just gives you a little bit of movement in the sound that I love um, I'll show you the phaser as well I don't use actually, actually use it too much but it still sounds cool <laughs> So yeah, that's the Ripley Fall. Super analog, that pedal. Almost too analog for its own good. It does change the tone quite a lot, um, but I kind of love it for it. It's kind of lo-fi, especially when you're on the vibrato setting. It does, you can hear it change the tone quite a lot, but that's cool, I still love it. Um, next we're going into the Delay Llama Extreme, my favorite analog delay, and really, I'm not getting the most out of it because I just love it when it's set simply. Uh, but I, there are some cool sounds in here as well. So this is how I have it set all the time. 
I want to bump up the level a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's really set really simply. If I want to tap in a slap, I might do that. So I'll just go spam the tap button essentially until it gets fast enough. If you've seen my demo on this pedal, then you'll know it does do some crazy stuff as well. Um, let's see what this does. So yeah, I mean it does crazy stuff. That um, I don't use that too much, but when you start combining it with some of the amb more ambient stuff on here, it gets pretty sweet. Talking about ambient stuff, we're on to the Tri-Parallel Mixer and these three beauties here. I talked a little bit already about how much I'm loving this, but essentially, especially with the slow and the mood, it allows me to create my own reverb sounds. I love the slow, for example, but there are a couple things I don't like. I'm not a big fan of the top end. It doesn't get quite loud enough for me. The problem, problems of that are solved with the Tri-Parallel Mixer. And again, with the mood, I'm a big fan of it, as especially the reverb sound, but again, it's really only a top end thing, so combining the low end of the slow with the top end of the mood reverb is just a killer, killer sound. And then if I want to add in a bit of my dry signal with delay, I've got the DD200 in loop one. Uh, first of all, let's show the slow on its own, and then we'll go add the mood and then the delay. Of course, that's without even mentioning the looper on the mood and also the sustain on the slow. Once you start combining these things, you just create huge pads, basically. It's a lot of fun. So let's go with the slow first. I mean, come on. Who wouldn't want that on your board? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still getting used to it because you have to kind of double tap one of the foot switches to turn it off, so I'm still kind of getting used to that. Um, yeah, I mean, hours and hours and hours of fun there. Absolutely, that's such a great sound. I'm gonna have to hurry it up a little bit because my cameras are running out of juice. Um, then we have the Flint. What, have, what can I say about the flint that hasn't already been said? You've heard the spring sound on my favorite. Like I said, that's pretty much on all the time. Unless I'm going super ambient, then I might turn it off just to clean things up. 
Uh, my favourite tremolo is a harmonic. <laughs> Super simple. And then with my favorite switch, I can access a whole other bank of presets. I have a, I think it's a plate, a much bigger sound. And then I'm trying to let the trails go out. And then on my fa on my other tremolo, we have a much faster tube tremolo. So yeah, it kind of goes without saying how psyched I am to have a board like this. I understand how lucky I am to be in a position to have access to this stuff and, you know, good friends in the industry to help me out with, you know, putting this together. Um, but either way, this is such an awesome board. I should also say as well, it's all going straight into the front end of my victory. I'm not doing anything with a f uh, effects loops. It's a mono signal path as well. I'm not going to stereo into two amps. It's really as simple as you can get in a big board. You know, we've got a few different things going on. And I'm just so excited. I'm excited to get to know these different sounds a bit more. Tri-parallel mixer is a game changer. If you want to see a video on the tri-parallel mixer, let me know. Um, there's only one or two videos out there on this thing. And they kind of they don't show you how I'm using it in a way, so maybe I'll do something on that. Yeah, there's a, like I said, a few MVPs of the board, the broadcaster, the broadcast, the tripolar mixer, and probably the flint as well. The flint is such a great pedal. Um, I didn't really show you so much about the DD200. From that, I'm getting a few multi-tap delays, you know, um, tape delays, space echoes, but also um, I love their terror echo in here, and also the shimmer and a slap as well. This pedal does a lot. I didn't give this pedal enough credit. Um, but it's sweet anyway. It's awesome to have that on the board as well as the Delay Llama. I love Delay. Um, it's great to have those options that pretty much cover my whole whole basis. Big thanks to Richard Alder and Ash for the board. It's insane. It's insane. I hope you're watching this video, man. You've really helped bring this kind of dream to life. Same with Phil at Pedal Patch UK. Thanks so much, man. This wouldn't have been possible without your cables as well. It's been sweet to kind of do this and that I I filmed a bit of the build process but it kind of honestly was stressing me out um, I kind of wanted all the focus on building the board and me kind of being a presenter on camera in a way wasn't working out so that probably won't come out uh, hopefully this suffices um, also maybe a quick mention there's a few cables here that aren't pedal patch loaded for bare patch cables up here and then we've got one um, practical patch cable as well so, uh, good friends as well from the UK um, that's, actually, that's a good point actually, there's quite a few small UK builders and brands that help bring this board together and that's that's cool, yeah, that's something isn't it, I guess. I'm also very aware that things are going to be swapping and changing, I've kind of done built the whole board with that in mind in a way, so there are a few spots on this board where it's relatively easy to swap and change a pedal out if I want to do that, because um, I know I've already got a few things in the pipeline that might find its way onto this board. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of pedal boards, isn't it? So I think that pretty much covers everything. I'm so excited about this board. I don't know if you guys can tell. Um, I'm going to turn the cameras off now and probably play for another five hours. So um, yeah, uh, thanks guys for sticking around. I hope you like the board as well. You're going to pro probably going to start seeing this a bit more um, through demos and stuff like that. You know how it goes. Thanks guys for watching the video. Stick around, maybe watch some more videos, and most of all, please subscribe. That would be really awesome. And put a like on this video. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.